A lawyers forum objected to a talk organized by the Karnataka Bar Council where advocate Sai Deepak was supposed to be the main speaker today. All India Lawyers Association for Justice wrote to the Bar Council and said that this event should be cancelled. The event was on the Uniform Civil Code pros and cons. Simple. But a lawyers association and remember Lawyers for One should be all about upholding the constitution, fundamental rights of free speech. Instead, in their letter, they said that J. Sai Deepak is a strong supporter of India being turned into a Hindu rashtra and has denounced the idea of secularism. They said that the advocate has repeatedly issued Islamophobic statements and attacked the Christian community and their educational institutions and hence he should not be allowed to participate in an event by the Karnataka Bar Council. The simple thing is that when an engagement is supposed to be about exchange of ideas, when a topic is about something as important as the Uniform Civil Code, can this cancel culture really be allowed to prevail? Of course I speak about Hindutva because I am exercising my rights under the constitution. So I don't see how that makes it unconstitutional and I don't see how that's hate-mongering. So the broad outline will be the origin of what we know as Anglo-Shastraic law in terms of codification of Hindu law under the British establishment. And as you can see, the outline is as academic and as topical as it gets. This is all about the subject. At least 45 minutes will be given to the audience. Let them ask questions. Okay, Dr. Anand Ranganathan continues with us. We are joined by Abdul Razak Khan, political analyst and Sanket Yenagi, advocate. So tell me this at the outset, Sanket Yenagi. You are from the Congress. You are all about engagement, mohabbat ki dukan. Why can't a lawyer participate in a discussion on the Uniform Civil Court? Firstly, this cancellation culture has itself its own history in India. Be it on... 1st of May 2020, the, there was a cancellation of Mr. Sai Deepak's speech in Jamia Milia Islamia. And subsequently at St. Stephen College, about the same person, on the same ground that his statements, most of them, are, con the, are, are leading to certain controversies, so? leading to certain disturbances. Similar is the history in India. So he shouldn't on, be he shouldn't be hosted. One minute, one minute. No, on 21st of what August, you say may lead to controversies. Does that mean you lose your right to speak? So let me come back to this. On 21st of August 2022, stand-up comedian Mr. Munawar Faruqi show was cancelled in Bangalore. On 26 September 2022, Atul Khatri's stand-up comedy comedy his show was also cancelled. On 11th, 10th November 2022, comedian Veer Das Bengaluru show was cancelled. So then the right is available or not available was not discussed. But unfortunately, it is being discussed now. I'm not saying it should not be discussed, it should be discussed. And there is one thing called right to speak, hmm. freedom of speech and expression. There is another thing in the same provision that there is a reasonable restriction. Okay, so let's take so it one by one. J. Sai Deepak people. is now live with us. Sai, when Munawar Faruqi is cancelled and arrested, nobody talks about free speech. Or when you have Atul Khatri's, another stand-up comedian's show being cancelled, nobody talks about cancel culture. But when you do, it becomes an outrage. Why? Cancel culture begets cancel culture is the argument. I'm grateful to all those people who send the love letters to the Karnataka State Bar Council because thanks to those letters, the event has been a fabulous success. A hall of 400 people had aisles overflowing with people. It was attended by close to 700 people. Students from across Karnataka who were students of law participated in the conversation. It was a sane, clear, objective, legal see that for themselves. I did not even raise a single political statement. In fact, the questions were political because the audience wanted answers to those questions. From my end, not a single political statement was made. I will not be compared with any standard comic or anybody else. As a practicing Supreme Court advocate, I know what I'm talking about. I know the limits of the law. 
I have always operated within the limit of my mind, staying within the bounds of the law. Any attempt to deplatform me or to take uh, or delegitimize me is not going to work. It's not going to happen. I will continue to speak my mind. But here's the thing. Your views are controversial, according to the letter. They said it's not because... I'm sorry, I've lost the... your audio. I'm not able to hear you. It's not because of the content of what you were to say, but because of what you have said in the past, more specifically about right. an interview that you gave, which was seen as controversial right. on two counts. One, Islamophobic, right. and two, because you right. said that three people should be made to leave the country, including a senior journalist and a historian. Right. right. So first, I have written two books, and one book specifically speaks of... Um, Middle Eastern colonialism and its impact on Bharat. Both books stand uh, validated and vindicated because they are bestsellers. And I'm not here to say that they're bestsellers, but nobody has been able to prove me factually wrong on anything that I've said. If people take offense to something, frankly speaking, that is not the legal standard to judge whether my statement is offensive. Perhaps they have, a, let's say, uh, uh, they, they are too hypersensitive. As far as my statements are concerned, Everything that I've said by, I'm happy to discuss and even capable of defending them without the need for any support from anyone. My statement on the Beer Biceps podcast, which is being referred to, was not a statement that came from me. A specific question was put. I responded to that question with very clear answers. In fact, in response to that particular comment, which was circulated as a clip a few months ago, or perhaps one or two months ago, kindly see what is it that the public feels, and you will realize Mm. that my position is no different from the position of most thinking members of the public. I stand supported both by the public sentiment on this count and I'm legally capable of defending it. So Point number two, mm. when St. Stephen's went about uh, issuing that invitation and then one particular cell within that particular college raised an issue, the college reached out and specifically apologized. And the, more, the best part is, other cells, student communities within the same institution criticized the opposition to my lecture from one of their cells. So it's not something which is across the board and it's not as if institutions are hypersensitive. Some people have always been hypersensitive and those who have been celebrating free speech are unable to digest free speech when shoe is on the other foot. Hmm. Now, I have delivered lectures in in JNU, I have delivered lectures in all sorts of bastions, whether left, right, or center. I've gone to Ashoka University. I've delivered lectures in Jindal. So I'm sorry to say, try as much as they might. They are not going to succeed in gagging or stifling me. Well, we certainly hope happen. that. But Dr. Arman, really isn't the problem, the problem speech, much deeper? Because a lot of people would argue what the lawyers have written is a sign of our times where there is so much polarization that people don't want to hear the other side and it applies equally to the right and the left. That is the argument given, that everyone wants to be in their own little echo chamber. Yeah, Padmaja, first of all, it's very plain and simple that they are scared of Jay Sai Deepak. Uh, first of all, a disclosure that Jay Sai Deepak is representing me in a case of criminal contempt, so anything that I say, but it's unrelated to uh, his representation of me. They are scared of JSI Deepak because they are threatened by him. Please remember, it is not the moneyed class that threatens these people. It are the scholars because scholarships threatens most because to the mediocre, it hurts most. These Gaia guys are hurt by scholarship. Now, four things here. They, I, they have accused JSI of four things. Number one, that he doesn't believe in secularism. Well, India is not a secular state. Eat difference between or separation of church and state. How is it India secular when it is controlling Hindu places of worship? Is that secularism? Number two, they are accusing Sai of Islamophobia. Well, to me, the real Islamophobes are the people who are accusing him. They fear Islam. They don't want to tell the truth about Islam. Otherwise, I challenge those people, some of them are on the panel, to tell what Islam talks about women, homosexuals, about apostasy, about Jews, about Christians. Third, they are accusing JSI of hate speech. Let me turn the tables around. If I say that Hindus, i.e. polytheists, are the worst of creatures, and those who don't believe in our verses would rot in hell, I challenge some people on this panel to say that I have indulged in hate speech. If they do not say this, then they are the biggest hypocrites on earth. 
So on three factors out here, and number four, I being a free speech absolutist, I do agree with you, Padmaja, that we have reached a stage where cancel culture is all pervasive. Hmm. But again, the fact remains that it hurts me. <coughs> it hurts me that there are lawyers on this panel, yeah. uh, Mr. Yenagi, who is actually supporting this boycott. It is shameful. And you know, I want to give a very interesting nugget to Mr. Yenagi because he comes from the state and to Abdul Razak Khan because he does too. Do you know that these same group of lawyers actually oppose the ban on the PFI? So PFI is more tolerable to them than JSI Deepak? Mr. Abdul Razak Khan? Now this, this has to be Kalyug. Padmajaji, first of all, Padmajaji, firstly, I think Anand Ragnathan ji should have been recused from this debate because he is a, I mean, a JSI's client. He shouldn't have actually participated in this debate because he will definitely be biased. Sir, I bow before your legal wisdom, but can you come to the topic? For justice, the moral, was worried. The, moral, the association of lawyers for justice was worried about the audience. Okay, Anandji, please, it was just taken to the right hand, just a joke, please. Padmaja ji, yeah. the Association of Lawyers for Justice was very much worried about the innocent audience, the law students who would be listening to JSI Deepak, who is a crusader of a Hindu rashtra, making this great secular nation a Hindu rashtra, first of all. Secondly, secularism, according to him, is bullshit. This is the okay, language word he's been used in a YouTube okay, channel. Seconds. Apart from this, we have heard even CAA. No, no, it is not from me. I am sorry. It is okay, not very quickly, me. I want to take a it response because Sai, you eventually been... ended up making that lecture. Yeah. Did you completely brainwash the innocent law students? Sai, can I take five seconds? Okay, five seconds, Dr. Ranganathan, then you. Yes, Guilty thank you. Charged. Thank you. By, by the same Thank logic, you, by the same logic, Padmaja, I can say that Mr. Abdul Razak should be boycotted. He shouldn't be brought to the panel because he was the one who cushioned the beheading of Kamlesh Tiwari, saying that Kamlesh Tiwari deserved his fate. Is that not hate? Hmm. Tell me. What will be allowed? Final word, Sai Deepak. Is... Yes. No, so uh, uh, I've been accused of indoctrinating and brainwashing. If I'm capable of brainwashing them, guilty as charged. All right. I will leave it at that. In the fond hope that we do not reach a point where everyone is in their own silos and only listens to what they want to hear. That really is the beginning of the end. Thanks very much, all gentlemen, for joining me.